Um, uh, so first off, I need to officially call a meeting to order. In response to Governor Baker's declaration of a public health emergency and the related emergency executive order, dated March 12, 2020, the Town of Citra public meeting shall meet remotely until further notice. Um, and we're also recorded and posted on Facebook. Thank you, Situate TV, for um, assisting us and all of Situate on that. Um, as far as the agenda, we have, um, we have one main topic, but after we approve the meeting minutes. So do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes? November sure, 18th. To approve. I'll second okay. that. Mike. And then as a reminder, we have to do a roll call vote. So I will call out names and um, you will say yes or no. Um, Paula. Yes. Uh, Mike DeMeo. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Scott Connolly. <laughs> yeah. Jeff Palmer. Yes. Adam. Yes. Myself, yes, and um, Dave Freeman is is not present. So the uh, first first agenda item is um, an update, which everyone's probably waiting for an update from our shellfish constable Mike DeMeo on the North South River closure. Um, an update on what's been happening since our last meeting, November 9th, 18th, and then um, some thoughts about moving forward. So Mike, you want to? So good evening, uh, advisory uh, committee and uh, residents and fellow clamors. Um, so I'm going to go down the list from the last meeting we had on November 18th. I took copious notes. I know some folks talked about dilution, uh, dye studies and partial of the sewer plant, plume results in conjunction with dilution. Um, some UV testing. Um, some folks were interested in the FDA of Briggs Harbor. I'll touch on that as well. Um, there was a request for an FDA uh, contact letter to be sent to the FDA. Also, one folk, one person talked about uh, having an injunction. Um, so I'll touch on all of those. Um, I'll just go back up the list. The injunction, while it was a great idea, um, I felt that it wouldn't be a good idea to rattle the cage of the FDA, and I'll get into that more why. I, I, I didn't uh, request a letter through the town administrator or the selectman. Um, so basically, I've been in co weekly contacts, if not bi-weekly contacts, with the uh, Division of Marine Fisheries. Um, I feel very, very confident they are in our corner. They are helping the best that they can. Um, the state is fighting a, a government conglomerate in the FDA. Um, I think there has been some movement. Um, like I said, marine fisheries is, is in our corner. They could sit back and do nothing if they wanted to. However, I think they kind of feel bad for us. And it's not just us, it's other parts of the state as well, like Plymouth and uh, Bourne down the Mass Maritime. And there could be potentially other areas in the, in, in the state of Massachusetts. So I think we were kind of the springboard for all, all things uh, water sampling. I've been in contact with the sewer plant operator as well. Um, and the Division of Marine Fisheries has started testing the sewer plant. Um, I think it's leaps and bounds of where we came from since November 18th, the two holidays, an election, um, bad times at the Capitol building last Tuesday, um, inauguration next couple, couple, couple of weeks. Uh, with that, you may see new people in those higher positions. Maybe they will be more motiva motivated to help us on this uh, front. So, I mean, things take time. Government has one speed and it's not fast. Um, I'm also happy to report that we actually did sampling today for two hours of uh, Situate, South Coast and, and the rivers and Marshfield. Um, the state's mandated to test those waters five times a year. And it's January 12th and we already got one out of the way already. So that's a good thing for us, especially for the rivers because the rivers are technically closed, but they're not prohibited. So which we're actually in a better category of being like completely closed down and see you later, we're not gonna do anything. And um, I think Marine Fisheries is looking to do sampling and situate sewer plant once a week, that's the goal. And um, once they have enough data compiled, 
they will go back to the FDA and make a statement or a case of those rivers being open. Any questions so far? Mike, you're not talking about testing the Marshfield plant or the Situate plant? Situate. Okay. Sorry, can you state your name and address when you uh, do a question? I'm sorry, Brad White, 149 Old Main Street, Marshfield Hills. Thank you, Brad. And then Jamie. Uh, Jamie Davenport, 16 Booth Hill Road. Mike, you mentioned uh, you'd give an update on Briggs Harbor uh, as uh, how the, uh, the closures affect Briggs Harbor. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, any, any questions you want to cover so far? Anybody? Um, is dilution, uh, I'm guessing that dilution testing needs to be done for the Cohasset sewage treatment plant in order to assess whether um, proposed uh, aquaculture sites out there would be affected by any possible closures due to this um, new uh, I what it's thing called. is not working again. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, so, so Jamie, the uh, marine fishery is also doing the same sampling at the asset sewer plant as they are doing at the situate sewer plant. Um, as far as the frequency, I, I will find out about that, but I know they mentioned it last week that they will be testing that as well. I'll see half a, half a Cohasset closed. The Marshall side is open. And I asked about that, if that would impact oyster aquaculture. He said, well, it could become a conditionally approved area versus truly approved. However, that would not limit oyster aquaculture. Oyster aquaculture still could, could exist there in a conditionally approved area. You just could not sell your catch overseas, which I didn't think would be much of a problem. But so it's not all bad, not all great, but they are testing both, which is a good thing. As good far as the, thanks, Mike. As far as the dye studies and the dilution studies and all those things, I think those will come on and after. But I, I think Marine Fisheries wants to build the case first to make sure that all the UV testing that's being done on both plants. Um, is adequate to what it was before. I mean, they felt before it was fine. So, and I think the town has done a good job with UV testing the plant operator, plant op um, in communication with me the whole time, even when Marine Fisheries called them. I mean, Marine Fisheries called them first before they even called me. And um, I said, no, it's a good thing. Because they're like, why are they coming here to test? I said, don't worry, it's, it's a good thing. This is good. This is this, and here's the reason why. He's like, okay, no problem. Um, and I know Marine Fisheries tested the plant today for a fecal coliform as they did in the rivers as well. So, I mean, the girl came to the boat for two hours and um, she drove the situate and then she had to drive up to uh, the North Shore to drop the samples off to be tested within 24 hours. That's the standard. Um, we had a special guest on board today and Jeff Palmer. So he was able to see what happens with the water samples. It takes about, it's about a two hour run in the river. He, he had, you gotta hit certain test sites. Um, she collects the data, water temperature, things like that, sea conditions. Um, no any rain in the past couple of weeks, things like that. So all that data goes into that. And then I get the sheets back in about a week or so. And all those are put into a folder for both communities of the uh, those test results, which I have no problem. I think they're going to come back very, very well. So as they have been for the past 10, 15 years. Any questions thus far? Mike, and she'll be back to test Cohasset Harbor and Situate Harbor on separate visits, correct? Yeah, so so we've already done the north coast of Situate today in Cohasset. However, I kind of want to get the Situate Harbor Master involved a little bit with the uh, co uh, Cohasset testing. I didn't, I wasn't going to bring my Marshall boat up there until we have like an MOU with all three communities, maybe even Doxbury a four town community um, MOU, memorandum of understanding of a full water sampling. This is something we kind of do for the shark buoys when we go out and check the shark buoys for our shark data uploads. Like Duxbury would check Marshalls one month, Situate would check Marshalls one month. Next month I'll check Duxbury, Marshall, and Situate. So, I mean, it's kind of sharing re resources, call it mutual aid or what you will. Um, obviously we're in the water now, but um, Cohasset is going to get equal attention as, as the uh, harbor as well. And that, I know they're looking to open the harbor up as well. So they tested a few years ago. Some of the samples were good, some not so good. 
but you have to have that historic data. So, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I, I did want to give some kudos to Marine Fisheries for stepping up and not putting, putting us to the side and, and like putting us in the closet and saying, okay, sorry guys, can't help you. But I mean, they really have stepped up. And like I said, I talked to them once a week and it's been positive. Hopefully their funding and budget streams, you know, remain where they are and, um, you know, keep the relationship going. I mean, you know, you, you, you do get more honey, you do vinegar. So I kind of want to keep that going. And that's why our boats are available, make it as easy as possible for them. And, and hopefully we can uh, get the end result of getting the rivers back opened up. I don't think it'll be this year, but I mean, hopefully for next year. I mean, I'm trying to be optimistic here, but I, I can't see it happening that quick, you know, because typically in those higher positions with like, FEMA jobs, FDA jobs, you know, there's, there, there are a, lot of, a lot of those are political appointments sometimes, and a lot of new people come into those positions as, you, as, you, as you've already seen other, other jobs already. So it's going to take some time to get people established and to kind of get to back to where we want to be. So that's just my opinion, but um, do what I can, but that's where we're at. Mike, with, with, in this process, would there be any possibility of – extending the season, possibly opening it at the beginning of October as opposed to the beginning of November? I know you wouldn't probably do be able to do it on the on the June, the back end, but on the other end, you might be able to, or no? For quite a few years, Jeff, they open it October 1st. I mean, I think it should be open October, September 1st, actually. But um, I, I'm not going to go there just no, yet. Right, I don't, but... I, I would love to have it up on September 1st for Labor Day for Seamers. I mean... The fecal, full, the fecal full, coliform samples have been phenomenal for years. And, um, and I wouldn't want it all summer because there's too many boats out there, and that would leave too many people digging. That, that would really kind of hamper the product out there, I think. And it's just, and it gets into a management thing. You have two, 300 boaters in the spit in the rivers, and you have 100 people digging. And I know some people dig regardless up by the same <clears> with their feet and everything. But, like, if we had nine months out there, it, it would be great. But, Let's get back to what we had first before we start asking. Yeah, it just seems like if, if the DMF is giving a resource to do the set testing, that they can include that time period. But we'll we'll yeah. take what we can get. It definitely yes. I, I wish it was open longer. And like, and that's the thing. We got November probably four years ago because yeah. it used to be December first, and we got a month out. But I mean, I've been crawling and kicking trying to get October. I mean, I think it'd be September personally, September to May thirty first. That. That's, that's the window I would strive for. And I don't think it will ever be truly approved, but, I mean, nine months in the river, is, that would be outstanding. Agreed. Thanks, Mike. Anybody else? Any questions? I know it's kind of short and brief, but like I said, it's only been six weeks with the holidays, really a month. Then, you know, a little phone tagging, getting people to commit. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's not, it's a little bit of dangling the carrot and, you know, and building relationships with the people that um, are making those decisions. So, it takes a little time, you know, and I think we're I think we're in a good spot. I really I really do. I'm pretty positive about it. So, uh, Mike, uh, Dave Daphne, yep. 350 Black Road. So I I just want to jump in and just share my experience over the last couple of weeks with DMF, sure. um, and relate what I would consider a passionate discussion. Um, from the other side, they may have thought it was different. Um. Uh, both Kennedy and Sawyer on a, uh, I've, I've emailed the D, um, FDA, I've emailed Amy Fitzpatrick, um, it came back from somebody else, a response. Um, it started out with, thanks for letting us know what's going on, to um, some interaction on a phone call to uh, Mike and, and T, I believe his name was, um, and I spoke with him on the phone about what's going on. He leaves his position on the 15th, so somebody else will come in, so just changing around, but um to, to summarize my emails and my discussions, um, both Sawyer and Kennedy said not told me specifically not to hold any hope or little hope for the river, the North River ever to open up for shell fishing again, and that perhaps a small spot of the South River would be opened uh, for shell fishing. So. I, I've I've been on your side of the conversation and I understand what's going on there, but this is what they're telling me. Um, there was zero plan for, for dye testing, the zero schedule for dye testing. They have nothing on the agenda to do that. Um, and I pushed and pushed and pushed and they received permission on the 5th of January to do the water testing from the plant. So 
Um, that's good. They were there Monday, so that's good. Yeah. So, so this, it's. I I want it to be half full, but I'm, I'm destined to find out that it's not, and it's uh, that's it's that's not acceptable, um, from my standpoint anyway. So I I, I keep pushing. Um, my last email. They told me they're trying. My last email. I quoted Yoda, "Do or do not. There is no try." Let's get this thing done. So, um, and let's move forward. They also they also stated that this should have been closed eight eight or nine years ago when this regulation on viral testing came out. And so, to that point, I have not found any confirmed sickness over the last eight years or reported sickness. Um, that was refuted with not everybody that gets sick from eating shellfish caused the board of health. So there's a there's a push and pull going on and and I'm okay on my end pushing. Um, but but it I, I don't have the same enthusiasm, I apologize, that that you do. Um, I don't see it as I'm, a yeah, I'm pretty optimistic, Dave. And um like I said, I, I'm, I'm only one person. I'm only a part-time shellfish constable. And, you know, it's like they're being mandated by the feds. We're being mandated by the state. It, it, I know. It, I mean, we, I can kick and scream all I want, but at the end of the day, it's not going to change anything. But if I can just get along and help facilitate and get educated more and more and hopefully get them some funding or some funding streams. Um, I, knew, I do know there's some grants coming out from marine fisheries for testing. Um, so I think that may help them, but I mean, at least they're picking my calls when I call them, Dave. I mean, I, no, I guess and they do, and they, and they do to it, me also. It's just you know, I mean, they're being held to a high standard too. I mean, the the state's not going to overrule the federal government on, on shellfish san sanitation standards. It's, that's not going to happen until they can prove it that it that's that it's clean. I and, and I I can't blame them. I'm sorry, but. but, but I know, but my argument has been, and, and I will say it again, they closed it because they don't know. And that's, and that's, that's, that's how it is. I'm also, I'm also pursuing whether or not the FDA has any jurisdiction over personal consumption of shellfish. Do they have, do they have jurisdiction? Are they overstepping their authority as a protective food agency for the interstate transport of shellfish to and from our state. And they, what they've done, I believe, is they've taken us and they've used us as a pawn in their big game of shellfish, and they've closed an area to them that is insignificant. Uh, when you take the total number of shell fishermen along this coast and you take Situate and Marshfield, you might, you might have 125 licenses sold and you might have 30 active shellfish people. Consistent, I would say consistent. So, so those are some of the things I'm I'm poking at is to find out whether or not they do have the right. Does the USD could they come to your house and tell you you can't grow a garden? Uh, you know, this is this is I a think, retail. I, I think that's a little off point, Dave, for what we're discussing. All due respect. I, I mean, I mean, to go one step further, further, if you dug in a contaminated area. A shellfish warden could knock down your door without a warrant and go in your house and, and seize those clams. Absolutely. So can the FDA <laughs> can the FDA mandate this and that? Yeah, that's the sanitation standard. I, I, I believe they can. I, and, I, I, and I feel if they couldn't, I think marine fisheries would be fighting back saying, you have no legal jurisdiction or boundary here. I mean, I'm not an attorney, but I mean, I can maybe ask those questions, but I mean, and obviously you've already done your homework on that already, so. I wouldn't say it's homework. I would say it's, it's. I want answers. Yeah. Well, hey, Dave, I have Dave, a, I, Dave, can I ask a question? Fred. Dave, yes, go ahead. You said uh, that they were closed. Is it going to be indefinite for forever or just this year? Hey, Craig, can you just state your name and address and then ask the question? Sorry sure. about the procedure. Yeah, Craig Rosenquist, 17 Acorn Street, situated. You said that it is close. It's obviously closed this year. Is it? You you said more, de more indefinite, like never open they, again. They told they told me that you will that, quote unquote, it will never be the way that it has been, and that 
and that the North River would be closed indefinitely. And a token, pe well, I use the term token, uh, uh, somewhere in the South River will be an area that may, may be allowed to shellfish. That's where they're going with this. That's pretty extreme. Uh, Mike? Brad White, 149 on Main Street, Marshfield Hills. Yeah, Brad. In support of Mr. Daphne's uh, great efforts, uh, I'd like to share a couple things. I agree that this is from the state and from the federal government, a ready, fire, aim approach. And as a member of the Still Wagon Charter Operators Association, where we have 60 members that are active, we have found to be very effective over the last 10 years or so. And, and writing a letter that's succinct that we all agree on that maybe is co-authored by you and Dave and, and whoever else is an important stakeholder here uh, to formally tell the authorities that we've never had a problem in this river. They are again ready fire aim approach. We have over a hundred permit holders in situate I'm not sure you would know in Marshfield and uh, there has to be a plan that does not include closure for a lot of reasons. People recreationally shellfish to feed their families. They do it for sport and to get outdoors. And we have never had a case. So I think if we've got a lot of data back to September and October and, and uh, December that Dave's really dug deep on and you have, you've done a Herculean job as well as others here. Uh, but I think we, it's time now in January, February to have a concerted effort to talk with the authorities from an affirmative stance that this is a takeaway that they decided to create a die test after they closed it. So anyway, they're the federal government, I know that. They're the state government, I know that. But we haven't had a voice really from our group. Uh, I think we should, I think it's time. So my suggestion is like we do, at Still Wagon is we create a form letter that can be customized by each stakeholder to write, to send by US mail or by email and start firing off communications. I think it's important that we do that because if we sit and lay in the weeds, we're gonna have to take what's dealt us. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Mike, I have a question on the timeline. You said you'd get the results in a week or so. Yeah. Will we then post those results or, or is there a follow-up meeting or how, for you to explain the results? Yeah, those results are the, the, the testing that we do a minimum five times a year, thus for fecal coliform and the salinity test. That is not the test that this, that's being done at the sewer plant. That's part of the UV testing for the viral. When we go out and test the waters, we are not testing for viral. The reason why the flats will close was because of viral, not for fecal coliform. So and we that, won't get the, because the, you also mentioned that they tested the plant. Will we get those results as well? You could ask, you could certainly ask. Or certainly. would the plant get the results? I guess I'm trying to understand who gets the, would the, it, would the citrate treatment plant get the results? It would get the results. This comes from the state lab. Okay. So. so we could follow up with the state to see if we could then get those results. Yeah, I can do that tomorrow. That's, okay. that's, not, that's not a hard ask. No, and, and, and again, Dave Dauphiny, um, if I continue on the conversation, um, both Kennedy and Sawyer offered to keep me, keep me posted as to what was going on. And I really think I don't think they should have to keep informed with me, um, but they should have a, a, a direct connection either between Mike as the shellfish constable or the shellfish advisory committee. And that's where I think the information should be going to and coming back to us. Um, they're not gonna put up with 50 people calling and I have a list of people that I wanna hand all this information to and let them call them every day. And that's just not gonna, it's just gonna piss them off. And that's just not, it's not going to work, um, the, the, you know, and that's, and again, I, I'm speaking as that's my opinion that the testing, 
that they say should have been done eight years ago that their predecessors didn't test is the same test that they shut us down for now. So, uh, you know, and I've said it before, during this specific time in our history, with what's going on in a pandemic, to lose this outdoor activity is, is, uh, is just, it's just devastating to a lot of people, a lot of people that wanted to go and a lot of people that do go. So I, I'll reiterate that. Um, the testing that they're doing is for MSC, male specific colophage, that's the host for E. coli. Again, as I dig into this information, the, the big deal is rush, rush shellfish. It's uh, oysters primary. Um, they had an outbreak of this um, norovirus over in Wellfleet a number of years ago. And in two weeks, they found that within two weeks, they found the source, tested the shellfish, and it was fine. This, this directive has come from FDA to the ISSC mandating that they want the change, not only in, in, in areas near uh, wastewater treatment plants, but mooring fields, marinas, up and down the coast, around the nation. So if you have an open area of shell fishing, and I'll use Marion Harbor as, a, as an example, that will be prohibited until they do a dilution test and find out about how many boats go in there and if, there's a, if there is a um, accidental discharge, um, then they would, um, they would be able to shut the harbor down for that. The problem is, is, as I see it, there's no way to do that. They can't shut it down. Some guy dumps his, dumps his, uh, his, his holding tank over by mistake. He pulls the wrong lever, whatever happens. There's, there's no, there's, they're just going to shut it down. It's going to be shut down um, unless we fight for um, historic data that we have. We have the testing that Mike has kept track of for bacterial, not viral. So I, I, I'm not willing to sit by and allow them to give me the answers that they want to give me. I believe we need, I, I, I will, and I will continue to push the buttons and get the answers to the questions that I have. There's a lot of circle talk that goes on. You leave a voicemail or you do an email and you get the answer back to something that you didn't ask. You know, they talk about testing. I know they do bacterial testing. I've been a part of it for 20 years. Um, but, but this is this is this is a total different thing and when you add up everything that they're telling us why it has to be done the dilution rate all of these things that come on it doesn't that it doesn't fit our area it might fit an area in Texas or Louisiana or Florida but it doesn't fit our area and I think we have to uh, I'll do my best to compile any information that will that will prove that over the last eight years, if it was supposed to be closed, and I've been digging every every year for eight years, and I'll, I don't know if I got immunity to anything or what, but anyways, I have had no issue, nor do I know anyone, and I beg, if somebody's had an issue with eating shellfish from the rivers, north and south, let me know, or let the Board of Health know, so we, we can find out about that. But there's nothing, the zero, and this is just, this is just over the top government regulation boilerplate this is how it's going to be and i and it and it's not fair it's not fair for not just me but everybody else involved in it and uh and so those are the those are the points that i'm just trying to make i just i don't think i think there's more questions every time i get an answer to something i, I find more questions and i'll continue to push on and and i it's not, it's not my place as a non-committee member, but but as a as a licensed shellfish number one. By the way, this year, Craig, I got number one, number one license. <laughs> so you camped anyway, out for it, didn't you, Dave? <laughs> what's that? You camped out. You were like you were camped out. Oh yeah, yeah. I walked in at like eleven o'clock. Can I get a license? <laughs> they were like, oh yeah, we just got them. So that was it. You had a wristband. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make a comment on David? Sure. Uh, Brad White, Old Main Street, Marshfield. David, could you share with the group your experience over the last six to eight weeks of the uh, corporate runaround when you write a letter to Mr. Kennedy, then he sends it to somebody else, then it comes back to you through Mr. Kennedy and nobody? No, it's just it it's a ping pong match between a, a, a trying to 
when I historically, I, I if I ask a question, I'd like the answer to the question. That's how I am. No has always been a request for more information. Those are things. Those are things that how I've operated, and also. You know, when you're negotiating an outcome, it's the success is when both parties are slightly dissatisfied. So along those terms and, and along those lines, I just want to know what's going on. I want to know about the I want I want to know about the dilution testing. And at the at the federal level, I get back an email that says, thank you for informing us of what's going on. We'll forward your concerns to the state. And it just goes back and forth. The state says we asked the feds for help. I talk at the at, at email at the Fed level. They don't. They indicate they don't know anything about it. Then you get back to the state. Well, we haven't called them yet because now we're doing our background work, and I believe that it has to be pushed. And I understand push and push back. I understand all of that. But I will. I my experience with DMF and the lobster industry. If you wait, it's not going to be good. And I think we need to be on it because as I said, to, as I said to Mr. Sawyer, seven months of closure and on January 5th, you get permission to test the water out of the plant after an eight year supposed to be happening. So what I feel is going to happen or I fear or I fear will happen is this will get dragged on through the summer months. There'll be one excuse after another, and then it's going to go into prohibited. And then they're just going to say, that's all we can do. And now you have to test it for five years or whatever it is consistently to, in order to get it back up. We have, we have zero evidence of any MSC, zero evidence of E. coli sickness, zero. We cook, I, I don't know about everybody else on this that's, that's tuned in here, but I cook my shellfish. You know, I'm not eating raw steamers. I'm not, that's not, that's what this pre predominantly this area is the steamers. You might get some razor clams and you might use them as a sashimi, but but anyone that I know, that's that's what we're we're not eating the oysters that are down there. Those are not those are not palatable cooked, let alone raw. So or mussels or any of those things. So that that's that's where it's at. I think there's a this is a blanket closure, and I and I'm 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 forcing myself to learn things I don't want to learn. I don't want to do it. Thank you for there's that information, my, David. There's Adam, my rant. <laughs> Adam had a um, question. Adam. First off, I want to say thank you, David, for, for contacting the, uh, the people that you're contacting in the, in the regulator community. Um, I was uh, rereading the letter oh. from the Division of Marine Fisheries, and it seems that it's the Division of Marine Fisheries that are, are, is under pressure from the FDA to do the closure. So I don't know that we actually have any recourse to the FDA to say cease and desist with the FDA. I, I, don't, I don't see any, any reference to uh, them giving a, a, an order to uh, DMF. And Mike, this is this is why I was was initially bringing up the idea of an injunction with the DMF, so that we as the the and I'm I'm the the one of the recreational shell fishers uh, on the on the committee, just so that everybody who doesn't know me, uh, I've only lived in Situate since 2012, and uh, in those eight years, I've been eating a lot of steamers that I picked and and have never had a problem. So I'm with you on that, David. Um, I think that, that uh, an injunction to keep the status quo in place is something that we, we need to give more consideration of because we're, we're protecting our, our com community of 120 licensees uh, as opposed to, to just giving up and rolling over. And, and I don't know how many people are, are licensees in, in Marshfield, but they, they, they have to be under the same uh, the same pressure here. So I think we need to spend a little bit more time pursuing the idea of the injunction with the, uh, with the town solicitors, uh, either, either jointly or, or, uh, severally and 
if that doesn't work, then I'm going to start having conversations with the other people that have had licenses in the town about maybe a class action against the against the DMF for an injunction because this is this is intolerable that that uh, especially in the current conditions that they're shutting us down for a a uh, an unknown unknown not even not even a yeah, known potential unknown. risk potential risk is what they use the word for so i have that every morning when i get out of bed there's a potential risk and and i embrace that and at night i thank myself for it you know <laughs> but if i can um susan back to adam um in the in the minute in the minute meeting the meeting minute report committee report for ISSC of 2019 um, on that committee was Mike Hickey. Mike Hickey is retired now from the DMF from Massachusetts, um, and and it states here this was this was um, this was their I guess I would call it their charge. It says the FDA did not concur with the conference action on proposal 11-103. The primary reason for FDA non-concurrence was that the language as adopted suggested that harvesting could occur in restricted waters, where dilution concern had previously prevented harvesting with the use of MSC as an option. It's the position of the FDA that should a state choose to allow harvesting in restricted areas as described above, then the use of MSC is mandatory. It is my understanding that the intent of the MSC committee was that the MSC be requirement for allowing harvesting in the areas described above. The committee is requested to develop clarifying language to present to the task force. So ISSC is the group that they refer to. So the FDA is definitely in charge and it's and it's and 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 it's it's more specific to the commercial aspect and the harvest and the shipment of shellfish than it is recreational personal use. I can swim at my own risk. I can walk on a beach at my own risk. I believe I have the right to shellfish at my own risk. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I believe it's part of the of of the rights for which I was born with, which was life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So those are my red, white, and blue statements on, on that. But the FDA is definitely in control, and it's blanket. And again, everything I read is the interstate transport. And the letter from Kennedy to the town specifically says that if they're found to be in not in compliance and formally cited for non-conformance by the FDA, the ultimate sanction would be to prohibit all interstate shipment. So again, this just this is just way above our heads. And I, 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 I go back to a farm stand. Does FDA regulate them? Corn, potato, whatever it is you're buying there. There's none, there's none of that. And this is an overstep of their authority. And, and I'm determined to find that out one way or the other. It, it, Anyways, it, back, it, back it, to you, Adam. Yeah, one thing you didn't say, or you did say, but you didn't crystallize it, is that their requirements, their job description, so to speak, doesn't fit us because we're not commercially harvesting that area and we're not shipping that area. So we just need to tell them it doesn't apply, right? Well, that's, that's why I have to look and see if FDA has over overstep their their reach most of the stuff that i read on here uh, that i can find up with has to do with the commercial aspect of it and um, i think for myself there, there is there, there is a potential risk but what is that on the grand scheme of things i i don't know i think there's probably as much potential risk and jamie can can come in on this for shipping oysters and eating raw seafood. I think that's where that's where all this starts. Again, we haven't, it, nobody's eating raw mussels. Nobody's eating raw steamers. Nobody's eating raw raisers. The few cohogs that are around down there, they're not, it's, it's not, it's, it's. And, and as I told Kennedy and, and the Sawyer. other guy, Sawyer, 
20 years of volunteer work just and i'm just talking about me and my time um that's it's not this does not sit well i continue to say that and it won't so we'll keep pushing yeah. but thank you adam for your comments on that there are uh, Jamie, other Adam, oh, go ahead Jamie, Jamie. davenport 16 booth hill road so in the space of uh 43 minutes we've gone from bright, warm and sunny to the polar vortex <laughs> is on us. Uh, two very different. I'm, I'm only giving you what I've, what I've received. And, and I'm oh, not, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not contradicting Mike or anybody else. This is my personal experience on emails and phone calls. I believe you. And I'm with you. I was shocked to hear how um, positive Mike felt through his dealings with um, those that he's been working closely with after having spoken with you, uh, you know, outside of this meeting and you relaying to me what you had learned. And I have a tendency to believe, I don't know, maybe I'm just a, a pessimist. More, I believe more of what you've said. Not, I don't believe you over Mike. I just believe that we're in for the. Oh, Jamie, I think you froze. But frozen. Yeah, Jamie froze. I think that guy from Cohasset got to him. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, while we're waiting for Jamie to come back. Um, sorry, Craig, while we're waiting for Jamie to unfreeze, did you want to jump in with a question? Yeah, I, I did. So you were able to get a license? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, why, why were you allowed to get a license if it's closed? You can get one too, Craig. It's just that area is closed. Still, you yeah, could go, you could go on the I, front beach. Yeah, if I go on, um, if I go to um, get sea clams, you, you technically you need the shellfish license for that. Oh, okay, got it. I'll go get number two. And I've never been number one before on anything ever. <laughs> uh, so can I just jump where where, where Jamie was laid, let, left off, Mister Reed? Re refute a few things. So I'm a public official, okay? I don't have the luxury of calling a state agency 10, 20 times, banging down the door, being not unprofessional, but like I said, I operate on the premise of you get more honey, you do vinegar rather than stamping my feet. I understand Dave's position. Dave is very passionate. Dave is a steward of the river. I know that. However, Things take time. I've never said the river is going to open next year. I've never said they're going to be closed for five years. I've never said that. I don't have those answers, and no one has those answers. That's why I talked about the election year, new people coming into new positions. I'm not going to cold call the FDA and, and go over the heads of marine fisheries when they're out there trying to do the right thing. I see it as them doing the right thing. I don't think it's all doom and gloom. So that's my stance. That's how... That's how my leadership skills are built, as well as other ones. I'm not going to call them every day to say, how about this? How about this? How about this? When they tell me something that they're going to do it, and they started to do the, the sampling, it's a good thing. Why it hasn't happened eight years ago, that I don't know. The last I knew, 2018, the sewer plant should have been closed. So and it was closed a year and a half, two years later. So, you know, marine fisheries is, is micromanaged by the state as well, as a lot of agencies are. And they're only, you know, it, they all have bosses. We all have bosses. I have bosses. So I'm not going to call every single person and, and just complain and complain and complain. You know, things take time. It, it, it'll work out, you know, and hopefully for the better. I don't think it's just Marshfield situate. I know some are taking it as a personal attack, but this is happening in Plymouth. It's happening down in Mass Maritime. And it's going to be happening elsewhere in the Commonwealth. It's coming. So it's not just Marshfield and situate. So I just wanted to let people know that. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And I actually want to note that I appreciate all roles because I think there's there's a place for everybody in this um, for advocacy as well as um, state um, our elected our officials that are representing us. But I, I do want to say this because I wouldn't call myself a pessimist or an optimist, but um, more a realist. And I cannot believe that they've already tested in the sewage treatment plant. I would not have even thought that we would be here in the beginning of January and they have already tested. So I'm 
try I'm focusing on some positive things that I had no intent I did had no idea would even happen. I thought we'd be a year from now and them still um, discussing testing due to funding and whatnot. So I, I do think that there are some really positive things that we can look at. But and, and we, Mike, still have, we still have a long way to go. I'm not right. I don't want to say this is like um, at all sugar coated at all. We have and a long way to go. Testing's yeah. just a piece of it, but she was ready to come back in February and March and, and, and test again. So Yeah, but that's bacterial. Again. That's a bacterial oh. test. That's a totally different test I from what the that, FDA is requiring. No, I hear you, Dave. I meant that they've also tested at the treatment plant, which I did not think they would do. But is that the stand Mike, is that the standard test at the at the treatment plant or was this the test for the MSC? It was for the virals. It was for it was, it was, it was for the fecal colophore and the viral test, which is the reason why the plant, the reason why the, the fisheries was closed down. So right. they're, they're, they're rebuting, re, rebuting to the, the FDA of saying, hey, basically marine fisheries are saying, we don't think this plant should be closed. We think the water quality is up to par. It's what they're saying. So they are actually contesting FDA's ruling, which is a good thing right. for us. Well, so yeah, all, and so yeah. And Soya told me in the in discussion um, that the plant is in the wrong place. I said, well, 40 years ago, it was the right place. I said, oh. we spent millions of dollars as a community sewering our waterfront properties in order to get away from the untreated sewage. And then he piped up and said, but now you have a pollution source. You have a point, a source point or whatever it was he called it. I go, well, we only what was done, what was what was required, and you continue to move the goal lines down again in an area that hasn't had an issue. So there's there's a lot of, and maybe I'm getting a different, maybe I'm getting a different response back than somebody else would. But these are the things that I'm being told, and they told me until that sewer plant discharges to the state waters then that's how it's going to be in the river. It will remain closed. Those were, those were the conversations that were going on. Oh. And I said, I think I even sent you the voicemail that Kennedy left me about not knowing what the hell was going on. He was like, yeah, we, we don't know. Is there, is, there, is, there, is there a definitive plan at all? Like how many no. viral tests we need to have before it's reconsidered for reopening? Is there any number? Not yet. Mike might know that. Uh, yeah, no, not yet. And, 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 and Dave touched on the sewer plant being in the wrong spot. Well, there's no one in this room that can reverse 40 years of the sewer plant being there. I'm sorry. So that's it, it is what it is. However, I did ask Mr. Sawyer, I said, how about they put the, put the sewer pipe out off the third cliff? He said, that will never happen. So I'm asking the right questions. You know what I mean? I'm not getting the answers I want, but the Marshall sewer plant discharges off into the ocean. So why can't the situate one discharge off into the ocean? And there you go. Now you remove the problem. How about that? Yeah, but you, you've got you've got millions of dollars worth of, of of effort to change a discharge for a few hundred people. It's not going to happen. It's this is not a big enough issue in the town of Situate, and perhaps the town of Marshfield. That, those are realistic. What I would consider a realistic review of what's going on. They're not going to do it. If they decide, and I ask the question, can you ingest seawater and ingest MSC or E. coli and can it make you sick? Well, they deflected that to the Board of Health. I said, well, maybe until they actually come down and close the spit to swimming and boating because it's, there's a potential risk, maybe we'll get some action. And he said, that's up to your Board of Health. That has nothing to do with us. David, back to the question, please. Viral tests, how many do we have to do? Does anybody know? There's no plan. No, there's That's no the plan of how many that I know of or when. But the first yeah. one comes back clean, we're, we're, we're on the right side of the field, correct? That's yeah. just one part of it. So, Brad, our, our job is, as advisors is not to, to tell marine fisheries how many samples they have to test. The, the point you guys are missing here, there's a lot of liability with this. If somebody goes out there and eats clams and gets sick, there's a lot, a lot of liability with it for the state and the town. So we have to let marine fisheries do their due diligence. You know, like I said, it's January 5th. They were already out there. We sampled today. 
So I see it as positive. Maybe I'm more positive 2021 as I was last year. However, I think we're getting good results from marine fisheries. I really do. I think we need to give them a little time to see what comes out of this. I mean, we're not going to be clamming this year. It's not happening. I, I know that for a fact. So, Please. Mike or Jeff, let's go positive. And let's, let's, there's other places to dig. I know people love the rivers, but there's other clams out there. Um, but let's give it a month, six weeks to see where we're at. I mean, we met last time November 18th, and we've already come some headway. I mean, it could be all negative right now, and it's not. I mean, at least they're helping us somewhat. I mean, and I think that's positive. I really do. And I, I don't think anybody else in, in, a, in a state position or a local position of official is going to think that, that, that this, this pr production is negative. I, I really don't. I really don't, guys. And I know I've worked with you guys on many other projects before. And, and believe me, I, I, I dig hand-in-hand hand out there as well. Not as good as some people, Dave. But, like, I'm not happy either. <laughs> I love digging in the rivers. You know what I mean? We've done many projects out there. We've raised a lot of money for shellfish out there to do propagation projects, you know, but you have to give it time. I mean, it's not, it's not going to happen overnight. I'm sorry. I mean, I know guys don't want to hear that answer, but it's just, that's where we're at. I mean, you know, Mike or, or Jeff can uh, either of you provide the, the name or, or the office out of uh, that the, the scientist who came down to test who, who that was. Yeah, it's out, it's out of uh, Fall River. It's uh, it's right online. It's the South Biologist. It's right online on the Marine Fisheries website. Do you remember what her name was? I I will email you her name. I'm not going to publicly put her name out there and have a, a bunch of emails go out there. I will gladly call you tomorrow, Adam, and give you her information and her email. I would gladly do that for you. Right. Yeah, I, I I'd appreciate that. I, all I'm yeah. going to do is is Write an email thanking the state for for getting on this in a, a relatively quick fashion. Well, I, I can if you want. I could email her tomorrow. Copy the committee, and then you guys can feel free to comment back if if that if that is, is acceptable. That, that yeah. Is yeah, Adam, I think that's a really good idea. Showing our appreciation and thanks for them um, coming out and testing. I mean, I know guys are not happy and. I mean, like I said, I'm in the same boat. Like I dug out there numerous times as well, but like, honestly, to get the response that we had, like Susan said, I mean, I I I, I didn't really see me going to Seamus as well. And let's just keep it going, see how it goes. I mean, if the samples come back good at the plant, they're gonna fight even harder. If the, if the viral samples come back bad, we're we're gonna be in for a fight, and that's just the bottom line. I mean, it, you don't have to be a scientist to figure that part out. No, but but. I agree with you, Mike. Let's not confuse the testing. The testing that happened the other day in the rivers was the normal testing that goes on every year for the last 20. That's a no. normal thing. Yes, the point. We, we tested the sewer plant Monday for a viral. They were there Monday morning testing for virals. As they I, were, I understand that. The, the testing we did today was yes. Those were the tests for fecal coliform which we had to do five runs per year. That was today, which is, that's a good thing as well. And that keeps us out of that closed or prohibited area. You know what I mean? So that way that's still, they're both positive testing get done and should be back in probably February as well. The more testing, the better, but the main focus is the plants, but you can't lose focus of testing for your normal fecal coliform uh, tests as you have to do for both rivers. So it, uh, they, they're both part and parcel to each other really, I think. I mean, do I agree with the closure, Dave? Publicly, absolutely not. I, I think the water quality is really, really good. I'm sure the North South River watershed will say the same exact thing. It's, you know, I'm not happy either, Dave, but it's, it's you know, but, you know, is the FDA, over, FDA overarching marine fisheries? I'm not an attorney, you know, but I am trying to push the right buttons, you know, strategically, if you will, and to get back to what we had. I mean, that's all. Well, here's, here's, and here's what I'll do, Mike, is is let's agree to play good guy, bad guy, and I'll be the bad guy. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> and our strategy is on Facebook Live, just in case anybody wants to. That's okay. That's you've okay. Got, just you've got case. that down, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Dave. Thank guy. you for that. Hey, and, um, Michael, you're yeah, testing You've been doing testing. Doing that's but, but like, just let you know, I, I, we'll get there. Trust me. I, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever let anybody down. I, I really don't. And 
you know, I'll, I'll fight, I'll fight to the fight. You know that. Yeah. Thanks, Mike and Dave. Um, Jamie, I noticed your hand was up. Do you have a yeah, well, my connection? So, my connection so cruelly di uh, disconnected to me before I had a chance to even make my point. So I have uh, a comment and a question. My comment is that to Brad's point, I do believe that we need to, that, okay, I understand Mike, things are going to take time, uh, a year, maybe even years, but in order to keep pressure on the FDA, we know that the, D the DMF is working with us and for us, but the FDA is not. They never have, they never will. Um, in order to, to keep that pressure on, I do believe we need, to, we need to unite and not just with like the Stellwagen group, but um, more of like the Mass Aquaculture Association, East Coast Shellfish Growers Association, um, uh, Steve Lynch's office, Patrick O'Connor, um, uh, state representatives. I mean, that all happened back in August, but that's, that was months ago. And it seems like once that, that first wave passes, you know, people get complacent and things take more time. So I do think we should try and, you know, uh, you know, form some kind of, uh, some kind of, a, of a communication chain or some kind of a front to keep that pressure on um, with stakeholders. Um, uh, my question is, um, well, my understanding of this whole thing is that this was done as a preventative measure uh, in the absence of any real evidence to anyone getting sick or any presence of MSC. This was done as a, a, out of a, a possibility of someone, of someone getting sick. If over the course of the next uh, weeks, months, and years, um, the sewage plant is tested and there is no presence or low enough presence of MSC in the sewage treatment plant, does that mean that this goes away? Or, or does the FDA still take that, that um, stance that there's still a possibility even though we've been testing and we haven't found it? Is, uh, have, will negative tests at the sewage treatment plant um, be so beneficial that eventually this could just go away? I can't answer for marine fisheries, but I, I would hope that if the test came back clean to the marine fishery standards, I, I see how, well, how couldn't they open it back up again? I, I really, I mean, like I said, how it was before, and though in years past they had a couple um, spills there, we were notified immediately, we closed the rivers, and we tested weeks later for a couple weeks, and they were reopened. I don't see how that can be any different now. Trust me, I, I'm in your boat too. I, I love digging in the river. That's the main, main spot to go. But, you know, I, I'll push a little harder. That's all. That's fine. I, I, I got no problem with that. And, and I will get back with the selectman, town administrator, get back to Lynch's office. I've been in contact with Tyranny's office already. Um, you know, they're busy with other stuff too. I mean, unfortunately, I think shell fishing is taking a backseat to other bigger present managers in the country, which it's not an excuse on my part, but, you know, I think it's down on their total pole just a little bit, but that, that's our job to juggle back to the top. So I appreciate the nudge. And then, um, the, uh, the, the, so there was a viral test done, but um, there is no timeline for dilution testing yet, correct? Not that I've been told, no. I think, I think this is the first step to test the virals, and if they come back good, I think they'll get into the next phase uh, with the dilution. So um, that's because what I'm hoping. they got to dig and test some of the shellfish. That was, they got to go through the, you know, this is the, the timeline that they gave me was they have to go through the plant. They need the records of the plant. They need all kinds of back, back information in order to, to go there. The the dilution test is a, th is it three hundred to one? Is that Mike? Is that the, the uh, 300 parts of seawater to one part of treatment water, and the plant produces about one point eight million gallons a day, so. Somebody has to sit down and figure out how much water comes in and out of the river and all that other stuff. And then the, then the, when they do the dye test, which they've done in Plymouth, um, it's an actual dye, visible dye, and they can see the concentrate of the dye. And from what Sawyer and Kennedy told me, that there isn't enough flow to meet the minimum requirement for the dilution test. In Plymouth? They didn't think. They didn't, no, situate. They didn't think that there was enough flow in order to meet that. Now, Mike and I have talked about the dilution numbers. Where do they come up with these numbers? This is, I, I cannot find out where this came from. And I, and I will. I'll find out where the number came from. But the 300 to 1 
who knows where it came up. And that's the same, that's the same in Washington state as it is in Louisiana and Florida and New Jersey and Long Island, Maine. Those are all those things. Those are all, all the, yeah, and, and that, that was a question from the first meeting, Dave, which that was on there, and I, and I questioned that right away. Like, where did these numbers come from? Where is this? Right. Where is this? With this? But, like, what Dave hit a point that I, I did forget something, that they will test the plant first, and then we will go out and test some meats, which involves digging some steamers and clams and testing the meats. That's something that we typically do anyway. I can, I'll volunteer to dig. <laughs> Me and Paula. I already got you. <laughs> that, but, uh, but that's something that we do too when we do uh, propagation projects because we do bring in contaminated shellfish from the Taunton River into the river, but they have to purge for 30 days, which you actually purge for four or five months, and then you test the meats. And we've never, ever had a problem with that either. So so I, I think it's pretty positive. But like I said, I, I, I can't make people do their job. Well, I can kind of infer, I guess, if you will. But, you know... You know, one person can't do it all, which that's why you, you have a team. But I think we're kind of. Thank you, Mike. Uh, is there anything else? I think we've pretty much hit everything. One question. There... Okay, one more. Mike, uh, so, so my understanding is we had our first viral test on January 9th, I think you said, and then the test you did today was your typical weekly. Coliform test, is that accurate? Well, it gets you five runs a year. But you five. do it weekly. Typically, you do it weekly anyway, right? No, we do it with like every three, four weeks. Okay, that's so the, the South River does it every week or every month. Okay, so that's not a novel test. That's one that's been happening, right? And you get the result from that pretty quickly. Yeah. And you have a result from that test that was taken yesterday already? No, I had nothing to do. All right, so nothing. then the third test, which is called the uh, diet test. And then there's a fourth test called the the, the, the dilutions the d dilution and dye study will come on and after if they can afford to fund it and if the viral tests come back good enough they're not going to do a dilution test without testing the viral first. Okay, so coliform happens, viral happens, and then if the funding comes available, then they do the dilution and the dye, and they do so many cycles of that until we determine, like Jamie was saying. When does it stop before they reopen? Is that accurate? Sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Right, but Brad, um, Mike, and T there. He was he was filling in for Amy Fitzpatrick, or in her position until he moves on. Um, in in a conversation because I called and he actually picked the phone up, which was great because Amy hasn't called me back yet, but I'll keep calling. Um, and so, um, and he said most of that most of that testing is done in the fall, which brings us another year again in the, another year. This is this is such a sloppy move by the FDA, the ISSC, and the state. It's it's the more I know, the less I want to know. I think the governor should get involved. That's what I you know. The fish thinks from the head first. You got to go to the top. So people know what the game plan is and put together an action plan. I mean, we're doing everything we can, right? Uh, and we're jumping through hoops that shouldn't exist based on non-commercial and recreational only. And they all point their fingers this way. And as I mentioned to you, Dave, a few weeks ago, you know, I really think it's a fired off letter or, or some type of communication to the governor to say, we need some senior leadership here. Nobody's, no, no, nobody's latching onto it. That's my story. Are there any, any other comments or questions or walk on items that have nothing to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> we did have that on the agenda. No, I guess, I guess I would just say I would, I would like to see a, a, a letter from the addressed from the shellfish committee in regards to the closure 
and the process for which needs to, uh, and an update as to the process for which that will be going. I'd like to see that to the to the shellfish advisory committee. And, and, and what's the plan and how we're going to do that and update us on what's going on. I'm, I have zero interest or tolerance in whether or not they fund it or they don't. There's people that will pay to get it done. So you're requesting a letter from the shellfish to whom? To the, D to the DMF. To the DMF. Kennedy and Sawyer. I don't know that anyone's addressed this letter that he sent out to the towns. And this was, this was sent out on October 28th. To the was, two, to, that was the, the letter to the two town administrators. Correct. And I don't know if any, I don't know if that has been responded right now. It looks like there's probably three or four people jumping around yelling and screaming and that's not going to make it move. I, 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 they need to be accountable. And I, applaud the efforts by everybody including mike and mike you were the one that was caught off guard when they came out in august and said this thing was coming down and it was like where's the meeting what's going on here there's no agenda they slapped it together bang boom closed it off fight the fight and we need i i, I really feel passionate about this letter being addressed by the shellfish advisory committee supported by the selectmen of both towns not just Situate, but Marshfield also, to find out what the plan is. All this tells me is that they've asked the US, the, the FDA for assistance. And when I talk to the FDA, they have no idea what's going on. They kick me back to the state. Is it well, true? My, I don't know. That's, that's what I'm being told. Mike, remind me, wasn't that letter in response to a letter we sent? Yep. That we, was we worked to send a letter, yes. Foster the meeting that we had at um, Mulaney's with, with uh, Congressman Lynch and uh, Patrick O'Connor. So we, when I say we situate, I mean, the, um, this was not a shellfish meeting, but it was Mike worked with the town administrators and some yeah. From both, both towns, right? Marshall and situate, correct? Yeah, right. It was said before I, 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 I did. Put that letter for us activated for all of September for Coast Guard that was sent off. And we didn't get a response back until late October when the flats were supposed to open November 1st. And I called Greg Swear. I'm like, well, what's going on? Are we opening? What's, he goes, oh, no, it's closed. I said, we sent you a letter back in September. And now you're, you're replying six weeks later, you know? So, so you're request you're suggesting we should you're proposing we respond to the letter which was a response to our letter asking i didn't about know there the was process. another letter yeah i didn't so, know there was already a letter so, so the so. town administrators said hey what's going on so the two town administrators got together and the shellfish constable and again we're an advisory committee we're not like this was town business they got together and wrote a letter um and then that was a response to the letter but we, you're correct in that we still don't know the process. Um, so that that is kind of an, uh, you know, parking lot item or a <laughs> item they did not explain clearly. So, for example, like what's the next step if the results come back good on the first test of the treatment plan and timeline? So. I mean, that, that letter would likely come from the town administrator and not the shellfish advisory since the town administrators wrote the first letter. Um, right, so as an advisory committee, would you advise that that should be done? I mean, is that, is that would you ask the selectmen to send a letter to find out the status? So um, ag again, it was the town administrator that sent it. I, I don't know, Mike, what do you think who should be sending the letter? You know what I'm saying? It's like a, the TA sent the letter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send one just for me. Oh, you can send whatever you want. I'm just trying I'm gonna, to. I, I'm just, I'm just, I just think, I just think that this group, I, and maybe I'm wrong, but this group should be funneling this information, not only receiving it as an advisory committee and discussing it and having a meeting on it, but then responding to it and making sure that, that, that this doesn't get swept aside for some other reason and intentionally or not intentionally it doesn't matter it just keeps it 
on the burner to make sure that this gets taken care of. That's, I guess that's where I'm at. And I just, I don't feel comfortable with them responding to me. Well, I, I'm, a, I, I, I'm a permit holder, right? That's, that's what I am and a resident. Um, we're kind of getting off track here with the update that I gave Dave and everybody else. Um, Adam recommended that we thank DMS about 10 minutes ago for coming out today, sampling and sampling Monday. I personally, I think that's the track we would take. I don't think writing another letter to Marine Fisheries is going to make them jump any higher through the hoop. I think we have their attention. Like I said, I talk to them weekly. The testing's being done. They're hoping to test every Monday. So I, I think that's all we can really ask for at this point. It, it's getting done. It may not be at Godspeed, but it, it's going. It's not like they're saying no, no, no. I mean, we're actually getting production out of them. I, I mean, they're testing the rivers. They're doing that. They're testing the sewer plants here and Cohasset. I mean, I think it's good. Some people are not think it's as positive as I think it is, but I've been in town government for 25 years and um, in the Coast Guard 31 years. I've been to many high-level positions and work with many people. Dave, I, I feel your pain, as I said, 10 times tonight. You know, unfortunately, it's not as fast for you as it is for me. I, I get that, in all due respect, but I, I don't think writing letters is going to change anything that quick when we already have their attention and, and we're getting production out of them. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I, mean, I want to massage. I want to massage the attention and make sure it maintains. I, I don't. I, I don't trust that you can let them think for themselves on it. That's what I don't think. Susan. Susan. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Sinkowski, 29. Oh, hey, Dave. Farm Lane. Just a, the, I did read the letters from the town administrators, and they were was quite. I use the word forceful and to the point. Did they get any response back? Yeah, that was the response, right, Mike? Yep. There's, so we posted on the website the original letter that was sent by the two town administrators and then the response. The I didn't see, okay, sorry, I did not see the response. I'll look for it. it it's on the website. Okay, thank you. Well, is it unreasonable to ask for some type of an end game? I agree with you, Mike. It's happening, it's working but there is no outline there is no goal and i think that would ease everybody if we heard they needed 10 good tests to then move to the next block whatever the case may be i think there's a lot of vacuum happening here and when there's vacuum in communication that's when everybody gets worked up so you're doing a great job dave's doing a great job everybody's trying everybody's pulling on the same oar but we're just asking for some technical guidance on what they're doing and how they're doing it. I don't think that's unreasonable to ask. I don't think it needs to be a beat them up letter, but maybe, hey, thanks for responding. Thanks for coming to test. Have you had any thoughts on uh, what the goals are so that we can meet and hopefully exceed those goals? That's not unreasonable. I think that'll give everybody some, some breathing easy time. Yeah, I, good, good point, Brad. And you've always been a steward of many things, Marshall, so Brad, I commend you for that. But uh, like I said, th this was the, the first test of the plant was Monday for the virals. I really want to give them a little time to get a couple tests under the belt to mm -hmm. nudging and prodding into their business. But I mean, because if those tests come back bad, it's not going to be good for anybody. So I, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse on this one. Let's give them a couple tests and then and see how it comes out. I mean, I, like I said, I, I firmly believe they support us. They feel bad for us. They're trying to do the right thing. I, I, I'm telling you, and I, I, I totally believe that. I don't think it's a bunch of BS and being talked in circles. I, I really, I talk to these people all the time. I've talked to them for a long, very long time. And to even have them there in, in, in July, in January is, I think it's a win, man. I know it's not a, it's not a victory, but it's a win. Okay. You know what I, you know what I'm thinking though. That's why. I know. I know. Fred. Yeah. I mean, we'd all be here pissed off, let's face it, if there was no tests and nothing being done. You know, it'd be even less positive that, that it's been now. So, I mean, at least it's something. It's a start. It's a start in the right direction. And, you know, I'm, I wish I had better answers than where we're at, but, I mean, it's, you know, at least it's positive. At least it's, at least it's nothing, not nothing. Yeah, I agree, Mike. Thank you. And we're I, still I, closed. <laughs> we're still closed, but we have, and we still have a foot in the door, right? And I think Mike has a really good 
um, thought on the process here where we thank them and, you know. Yeah, that was, um, that was for email, so I'll, I'll email right, her. And then, and then it, when we get the test back, we ask about the test. When we get the test back, and, and again, I'm talking about the treatment plant test. Um, you know, we say, okay, great. Cause we're hoping we, you know, we all know it's going to be good. We're hoping, 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 um, when we get a good test back, then the next step is, Hey, that's, we're, we're super excited about this. What's the next step? How many tests do we need? Um, or what are your thoughts on, you know, at what point do you go out and dig for some, a sample? So, um, I still think, I still have hope cause I think we have our foot in the door and, um, a process we might not know the end point, but we we can see a couple steps ahead of us. Yes. Anything else, anyone? Anyone? Thanks, everybody. I think I'm, I think I'm Susan, done. would you like an emotion to uh, emotion? A motion to adjourn. Yeah, that'd be awesome, Jeff. <laughs> at at eight eighteen. At eight eighteen. Jeff, you want to pick a, a next meeting time? You want to pick up next month, or when when do you guys want to meet again? I mean. Oh, that's a good good point. Next month, you want to do a month from from this week. Another sure. Tuesday. Yeah, or just let's you know check the springboard to see where we're at a month from now. I mean, if we're in the okay. same but. If we're getting more tests and we're moving forward, then, I, you know, that's good. But, you know, I can't gauge the future. So let's see when next month and get another meeting. But you guys gave me another work list and I'll work on this work list. Yep. And happy to help, Mike, if you need any help on that. And I'm sure other people would be too. But I got DA on speed dial. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll schedule the meeting. I'll schedule the meeting. At, look at the... Uh, talk with Situate Television, obviously, for a um, free time and schedule a meeting a month from now. And um, now, Jeff, do you want to redo that motion? At 8.20, <laughs> motion to adjourn, please. Second. Se second by Adam. Um, again, roll call all in favor. So, Paula? Yes. Mike? Yes, please. Yes, please, Scott? <laughs> yes. Adam? Hi. Jeff? Yes. And myself? Yes. Um, and also, no, um, Dave's not here, so um, all in favor. And I will see you all in a month.